live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Still got some beautiful days ahead of us, but you can start to see the change that we're going to get for the weekend. Find out what we can expect for Saturday and Sunday coming up. All right, Ben, you can find them all around Metro Detroit nowadays. What can you do about them? Tonight, one local city is taking a rather unique approach to the growing coyote population. But we begin with a Detroit high school teacher under investigation after his students say he called them slaves. The incident happened during a world history class yesterday at Detroit Renaissance. Parents were alerted, sending their complaint to the superintendent. We bring in Mara McDonald, who's live at Renaissance High tonight, with more on what happened in the classroom, Mara. Hi, Devin. According to parents, this was a world history class, and the kids were learning about ancient Greece, specifically the Helots of Sparta, who were an enslaved class of people. And so they're learning about this by watching the video, which the teacher is showing in his world history class. And then the teacher adds on, after they learn about the helots, you guys are helots. He tells the students that they're helots. My child, my son, Joshua states, um, are you saying we're slaves? And the teacher, without pausing, says, yeah, you're slaves. You're like slaves, just like, just, just like they are. You're like slaves to us because you have to do everything we teachers to tell you to do. When Jamon Jordan heard this from his 11th grader at Renaissance High School, he found it to be highly inappropriate. On one level, that might sound almost like a joke. But it becomes uncomfortable because you're comparing students to slaves. And this is, of course, a white teacher in an all-African-American all class. So it begins to feel kind of creepy. He emailed the superintendent and got a quick response. The school district telling us in part tonight, Quote, we immediately initiated an investigation regarding the allegations and will determine disciplinary action after the investigation is complete. Jordan tells us his son will not be returning to the class if that teacher is still in charge. Back here live, Mr. Jordan tells us that there have been other what he considers questionable comments made by this same teacher that he has heard of, and he is hopeful that the district is going to do a complete investigation. We're live on Detroit's West Side tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Okay, Mara, they're moving out of the wild and into our community. So is it time to just accept that coyotes are here to stay? In Sterling Heights, calls to police have increased because of coyote sightings. And tonight the city is informing people on how to live with the animals. Larry Spruill is live in Sterling Heights with that message, Larry. Well, Kimberly, people here at the Nature Center say it is possible to live with coyotes. That's because, honestly, they were here first and this is their environment. And tonight they passed out these flyers informing us about our new neighbors. They have an important place in the ecosystem and I just want to make sure that you leave here not feeling like coyotes are a villain or a nuisance or a pest. That's the message leaders here at the Nature Center in Sterling Heights want people to hear loud and clear Wednesday night. They say coyotes are here, whether we like it or not. In the late 1890s is really when we started to see coyotes moving into southern Michigan. Many packed the Nature Center because people are seeing more and more coyotes in and around their neighborhoods. I've seen them though. I've seen a few um, uh, wandering around. I've seen them in the uh, overflow areas. I've, I've seen them walking around. Chris did brought his family to the meeting. One of the reasons I'm here is so my kids can understand what it looks like, how they behave, and they kind of stay away from them, keep their distance. They're not only in Sterling Heights, but they're all in pretty much every single county in the state of Michigan. Local Forest anchor Kimberly Gill knows firsthand she recently saw this coyote behind her Detroit home. Oh my God, that's a coyote. I think that is a coyote. Now here are some coyote facts. The Nature Center says they're about 40 to 60 inches long. They weigh anywhere from 20 to 46 pounds and they're gray to red in color. Now, a lot of people tonight asked the very question, can you shoot or hunt the coyotes? Now, here in Sterling Heights, you cannot fire a gun within Sterling Heights city limits, and you cannot hunt the coyote as well. Now, the police chief did say if you are able to carry a gun legally and you are attacked by a coyote, you can defend yourself. We are live in Sterling Heights tonight. Larry Sproul, 
Local 4. From what I understand, though, Larry, they, they will only go after small animals, so you should keep your animals, you know, especially if you have small ones, a dog or so forth, inside. But you talked about encounters. Are there certain times of day that coyotes are, are more active? The one that I saw, it, it was the middle of the day, and it scared, as you saw, the dickens out of me. <laughs> right, Kimberly. Now, the people here at the Nature Center say they are normally very active at sunrise and sunset, but you can see them during the day. That is perfectly normal. But also, they say if you come encounter with one, to wave your hands like this really wildly and yell. Be very loud and active, but most importantly, do not turn your back on them. Yeah. Kimberly? As you said, they're here to stay. All right, Larry, thanks. You were very quiet when you encountered yours. <laughs> I, it sounded like I didn't know what it was. What you, I know, I, I know. Was yeah. Well, it is a cool evening across Metro Detroit. It is, and Ben is tracking some uh, fog for the morning drive too. Yeah, guys, yet again, we've got the clear skies out there, calm winds, dry air, all that combined to give us the possibility of fog. We don't see any out there right now. Visibility is all at a full 10 miles, but by the time we get towards daybreak tomorrow, Visibilities will go down, but notice that these numbers are going to stay generally above two miles. So this should not be an issue for most of us on the roads tomorrow. You're just going to notice the fog in the distance, and it's not really going to last all that long. By 9, 10 o'clock, this stuff should be gone, and we'll be on to the sunshine. In fact, that will boost temperatures to the mid-60s by noon. We will touch 70 tomorrow and get even warmer on Friday before everything makes a U-turn this weekend, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Devin? New tonight, the Macomb County Health Department is investigating several cases of Legionnaire's disease at a local hospital. Seven cases have been reported at McLaren Macomb since July. Six of those cases being reported since the middle of last month. A source, though, has not yet been identified. Now, Legionnaire's is not transmitted from person to person. It's usually spread through bacteria in water systems. The hospital is cooperating with the investigation as officials try to determine whether other patients have been infected. A man is in custody tonight for allegedly starting the apartment fire that killed a mother and her two year old daughter. The fire broke out last night at an apartment complex near West Chicago and the Southfield Freeway. Police say a 24 year old man intentionally set the fire because he was angry at his girlfriend. The fire then trapped the family of four living upstairs. The suspect's girlfriend says she's still in shock about what happened. It's awful as hell. My heart hurts so bad because I see them kids Every day, my son play with his son. This is not just no stranger. I lived with these people for months. Investigators say the fire was caused by the man putting clothing on the stove. A seven year old boy was also hurt in the fire. He remains hospitalized. We're learning more about the people involved in the deadly crash on Detroit's east side. Police say the group inside the car was involved in nearly 30 robberies, including one earlier that day at a footlocker on 8 Mile. Police believe the group may be part of a larger street gang on the city's east side. Two people were killed after the car crashed into a home and caught fire, including one man who was part of a DPD mentoring program. Get ready to see more of this dancing pie chart. It represents who pays what in the state budget. That red slice has liberal advocacy group Progress Michigan calling for lobbying reform because that small red slice is what they say businesses pay in taxes for the state budget. The group is calling for an end to lobbyists being able to wine and dine and send lawmakers on trips. The problem is that, that the lobbyists in Lansing have so much power uh, and really unchecked power um, that they are helping to control uh, all the issues that are moving through Lansing, including the state budget. If the legislature won't reform how lobbying is done, Progress Michigan has already filed a ballot proposal committee that would take this issue, as well as increasing taxes on businesses, to Michigan voters. The UAW strike against General Motors is about to head into day 25 with no end in sight. Yesterday, the UAW informed membership one of the key issues was a lack of commitment by GM to building vehicles at U.S. factories. Talks are expected to resume again tomorrow. Still ahead, a school district is making drastic changes after a student is burned in class. The action the district is taking after a laptop overheated and started a fire. A state lawmaker's home mysteriously demolished in Detroit. Weeks later, the mystery behind the demolition may finally be solved. But first, two Michigan police officers caught on camera throwing punches after a bar fight breaks out. We'll have that next. It's happening right now online. Identity thieves targeting your children. In a Help Me Hank special report starting tomorrow at 6 a.m., I'll show you what you can do to protect your kids.
life-changing moments. I was miserable. I'd worked in sales and marketing. I was unhappy and unsettled enough that I knew I had to make a change. And you have the tenacity and the will, the determination and the willingness to work hard and never give up. Go for it. There's this job opportunity on TV and that I was able to audition for that job changed my life. Now, years later, I have the job of my dreams in the city that I love and I couldn't be happier.